So if we go, let's do a quick merge visible. And here's our merged mesh here. Okay, so we've got this piece here. And now what I want to do is anything that's similar that I want to have the same uh, material, I'm just going to assign something new. So I'm going to go over here to my green and all these little pieces in here, all these little joint pieces, these little greebles I'm going to put in one poly group. And, or I'm sorry, one mesh ID. Here and then these little chunks here and here and here. And oh, you know what? I don't have X turned on. Turn X on. Save you some time. Although those are all poly groups, so it shouldn't matter. Here and here, oops, grab these things. All right, control shift drag, control alt F, fill those with green. And now let's keep working our way around the color wheel. We'll go light blue. For light blue, we'll grab this thing here, control shift A to grab all of it, control alt F. And then we'll go down to dark blue. And that can be like my support metal. So I'm just going to go through here and click all my deep metal pieces here. And you know what? We don't need that one. But this is all part of one. So you know what I'm going to do? Hmm. Pain in the butt. So I'm going to grab this little piece here. Control Shift A. Control W to make it one poly group here. And now I'm just going to go through here really quick. And these things are really light polys. All the polygons are kind of hidden up in the in the edges here, so it's going to be kind of a pain. There we go. Grab him. Grab him. And I probably should have done a group, poly group all, just to make my life easier at this point. Control Shift A. Ah, oh, these polygroups are all over the place. All right, let's do this this way. Grab a select lasso. And I can't select these ones because... All right, let's do this. Please don't crash on me, ZBrush. What a pain. Slice. Okay. I'm going to grab these. Invert. I'm going to grab these. I'm going to add that to the inverted selection. I'm going to grab these, add those to the inverted selection. There we go. Again, working my way around the color wheel here. Let's go ahead and grab these two also. And we'll grab this one. And again, all of this can really change when we get into Painter, especially if we're going to keep these objects separate. You can just fill masks by uh, polygon continuity or even UV shells. But again, we're going to play it fast and loose. So, okay, we'll go into purples here, and we'll do our joint supports in purple. Hopefully this works well. So we're going to do Control shift grab those, invert that, Control shift alt grab these, Control shift alt And again, normally I would do polygroups, but polygroups are not cooperating with me tonight. Here. Okie dokie. How are we doing? Uh, poly paint, poly frame, poly groups. I do. Um, unfortunately, this guy's poly groups are all over the place. The only reason I wouldn't do that is sometimes you can get pastel purple next to pastel slightly less purple, and then Painter has a hard time uh, differentiating between those. So that's when I would go into. Um, the tool and just grab this little color swatch thing to sample from. Um, in this case, it would probably be fine. Uh, I know I'm afraid to because it's 5 million. I don't want ZBrush to get too squirrely on me. Um, but yeah, normally polygroups would work just fine. 
was, yeah, like this thing has a polygroup that this thing shares. Rah! Phil, goodness gracious. Uh, and then we're back here to red. So I'm going to go here to like dark red. And we'll start working our way around our color wheel again. We'll grab this thing here. And you don't even, like I said, you don't even have to do this. It's probably be even easier if I was to just take this in the painter as separate objects and uh, do it that way. Now, if I want to make this, we can just sample that green color by hitting uh, C. And then we can fill that. How we doing? Let's do this as green too. Yeah, see, this is uh, a lot of pain in the butt. Not you. Control W to polygroup this thing. Fill it. Make sure Dynamesh is turned off so you don't actually Dynamesh your stuff. Let's go ahead and assign this as a baby blue as well. This was sharing a polygroup. Uh. Okay, almost done. And then this purple here. So this is a, uh, let's do what color do you want to do the feet? No, we'll just steal this. We'll do here. We'll grab this piece here. And this piece here. Control Shift A. Get rid of this one. Control W, fill. All right, and again, dark purple here. And we'll just grab this one. Don't want that one. We'll do this one. Let's do an auto groups on this one here. There we go. I'm going to make that one baby blue as well. All right, purple. Keep meaning to grab this one here. And then finally, the fingers. I think I'll just make this color. And those should all be one. Yay. So should I make those purple? Are those green? And actually, this should be purple. And this should be green. And let's go ahead and make this purple. All right, I think we are done with this bastard. So now we got to think. Oh, wait, we got one more. We'll just make gray. This little thing here, this little wooden handle. How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my UVs are going to be really nasty while we're starting out, but it's I just want to get in the painter and just get that stuff done. Um, do you render in uh, do, after substance? Do you render in Arnold? Um, it's been a long time. Um, like when Arnold first was included with Maya, I took a quick run through that and I did it. Uh, I'm not very good at it. Um, so probably not tonight, but yeah, someday in the future. Um, but yeah, we'll do, well, probably what I'm going to do is go into Painter, we'll do a render, and then we'll do an eye ray if I can get it in there. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, eye ray. All right, I'm, um, red sh yeah, Redshift and uh, Octane are my go to. Key shot obviously for through ZBrush, and then on the outer edges it gets into like Arnold and V-Ray and all that stuff. Um, and I haven't done a lot of organic modeling when I get into skin and stuff. I'll tend to use V-Ray, but I need to I need to brush back up on that stuff, man. I would just embarrass myself now if I tried. So um, okay, so now we need to split this thing up into pieces that make sense. And in this case, what I'm going to say is animatable pieces. So for the animators. I'm going to go in here to select lasso. Uh, these pieces will be separate, and I'm not going to want to dynamesh these together. They're pretty close. So when I decimate those down, they should be fine. The knuckles I'm going to keep separate. The palms I'm going to keep separate. So those are all fine. Uh, these arms I'm going to keep separate. These I'm going to put together. So all of these joint pieces I'm going to go ahead and squish together. So I'm going to go ahead and do Control-Shift. 
Control Shift A, and then Control Shift A. And I'm gonna split those. And you know what, let's just turn our eyeballs off so we can kind of keep track of where we are. Uh, so these are all going to be separate. These shoulder pads up here can kind of be welded to this thing, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and just pop these off. Split hidden here. And the wheel, you know, if they want to animate this thing, why not? Just in case, I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. And then, yeah, all this stuff needs to be separate. And this whole middle axle thing can probably be one piece, I think. They're not going to animate that separately. So I'm going to kind of reach around here. And again, I would use Control shift and just grab everything, but my polygroups are kind of acting a little bit strange. So I'll take that whole chunk to be animated. And then these whole knee pieces can all go together. There we go. And these ankle pieces can go together here. Oh, you bastard. Okay, so when this happens, if these are supposed to be merged or something, you can just select one, and then when you go to merge down, um, you guess these both have to be turned on, and then you can turn on weld just in case they're all supposed to be welded together and that'll go ahead and weld everything as you merge them. And you can also do weld points under geometry modified topology with a weld distance, but just in case you can just weld things down as you go. Uh, and this body, okay, so obviously these things are gonna go together. And now his body, all of this stuff except for his handle. So this and this can be together. Those can kind of swing around. And then this body piece here, and this little, whatever that is, the little loincloth thing, can all go together. Cool. Oh, you know what? This needs to go with the body. This can be separate. Front foot and back foot, they can animate those separately. Split hidden. And then, yeah, all this stuff. So now this should be a little bit easier. I'm going to take all these fingers. These ones I'm not going to bother separating out and naming, but I am going to be careful when I decimate these so that they are all separate pieces so they can animate separately. So we'll go ahead and split those off. Same thing for the knuckles here. Go ahead and split. Uh, wow. There it is. And then this, those two things can probably actually go together. And then these things can be split off. Whew. So we only have to name 18 things instead of 34 things. Uh, let's see. What did I change? Um, drag it down. Uh, project and convert a displacement map into geometry in Maya. Uh, I know. I've done that in ZBrush a while back, but I haven't. Uh, baking and Marmoset Toolbag 3. I did. I do it at work, and uh, it's super flexible, super fast. Um, yeah, super good. I need to get that installed at home so I can use it here. Uh, I do like just hopping into Painter and having it do all that crap for me, especially when I'm doing just pre stuff. Um, will Painter make multiply maps for each material ID? It will, yeah, it will make separate color IDs for each uh, color that we just made. Oh, another thing is, in the other video, I was like, why is my uh, FBX not, a X not baking my color IDs? And I found out there was kind of a buggy thing with that, but we'll, I'll show you how to fix that. Um, <laughs> I 
<laughs> this right now is just going to be an asset for a game. Uh, but you could do a cinematic version of that. It's not a whole lot different. Um, yeah, Marble Set uh, Baking is easy to learn. And uh, Marble Set in general is pretty easy. And they got stuff pretty well documented, so it should be, shouldn't be too bad. Uh, but like I said, I need to get installed at home before I can use it. Um, cool. Okay, so uh, we got this thing going. Let me go ahead and turn everything back on. So if you just want to do a quick preview. Now, if you hop over into Painter, you're going to see... Okay, so we saved out our smart material here. So if we go into Recent Files, I'm going to load up our BattleBot Salt that we did last time here. And uh, get this guy ready. So let's go ahead and start naming this stuff. So I'm going to go into Solo Mode here. And we will rename this um, Elbows High. Shoulders High. Uh, this is called a... I don't even know what that is. Wheel. We'll call this a... And if you want to do an underscore and Z brush, it's Alt Shift. Let me zoom out here. So what is this thing? Knees. Alt Shift underscore is to make an actual underscore. Uh, this will be. Handle high. Body high. Butterfly high. Legs high. Shin high. Foot high. Fingers. Knuckles. Forearms. Hands. Heels. Bada bing. Let's go ahead and export these as our high res here. Ernie high res. We'll make a new folder. Just keep it organized. Call it bake. And we will call this. Ernie high. Give that a minute. 